Hi, welcome to Just Bar. Today we're gonna mix a simple variation on the Death in the Afternoon. So the Death in the Afternoon is a classic Hemingway cocktail comprising of just absan and really, really chilled champagne. Now, I love this drink. The only problem is that you need a champagne or another classic method sparkling wine because it's one of the few drinks that really doesn't work out well with uh, dry sparkling wine like Prosecco or generic dry spumante. While messing around with Absan and Prosecco I came up with this recipe which I think let us enjoy the flavor of Absan with the cheaper kind of sparkling wine. Let's get down to mixing. So we're gonna work in our mixing glass. Let's start with one dash of Peugeot beaters. We are gonna be playing with the anise in these beaters because we are gonna go on with Absan and we're gonna need 7.5 milliliters of Absan. I'm using this Absan Pontarlier, which is excellent, 56%. And uh, yeah, to do 7.5, I'm just gonna measure a overflow teaspoon. And then we finish the contents of our mixing glass with some Amontillado sherry. I have this Lustau Esquadrilla, and we're gonna need 45 milliliters, which I hope I still have in this bottle. Yes, just still have. Let's get some ice for our mixing glass. And let's give uh, this bad boy a stir. Smells pretty good already. I can smell the sweet funkiness of Amontillado sherry mixed with the anise flavor of the absan. I think this should be about right. Let's strain in a flanged coop. And let's add a bit of uh, Prosecco. This is a Prosecco from Kirkland, which is pretty good actually, and really cheap. And uh, we don't really want to top off, I mean, up to here. We just want to add maybe 30 milliliters of uh, sparkling wine. Not too much. Yeah, maybe like that. Well, let's get the pink grapefruit and let's express the essential oils of the grapefruit peel which always go great with sherry, I feel. And there you go! As this is a variation on the death in the afternoon, I would like to call this the death in the early evening. Cheers! Not the grapefruit expression. The sherry helps the cheaper, dry, sparkling wine to blend better with the absan and I think this is a really good cocktail. The dash of Peugeot just adds a tiny bit of spiciness while keeping the any steam going. I like this. I think it's good. It keeps the spirit of the death in the afternoon while allowing you to use a much cheaper wine. So if you enjoyed the video please like, subscribe, comment down below, share with anybody you like and don't like. Steal yourself another Hemingway classic and hopefully I will see you next time. Cheers! I was like let's make a really quick video today like be quick or be dead which connects to Be Quick or Be Dead, a song from the 1990 Iron Maiden album called No Prayer for the Dying. Now, that was the first album by Iron Maiden I bought when it came out, because by that time I guess I was already a fan. But I remember what one critic said about this album. They were saying, oh, this is such a much more 
powerful album is so much better than the previous Seven Son of a Seven Son, blah blah blah. And the truth is that nobody remembers this album anymore, while Seven Son of a Seven Son is uh, a certified classic, one of the best albums, if not the best album, at least in my opinion, it's the best album or by Iron Maiden. Because he has just an incredible array of songs. It sounds great and it was uh, their pinnacle. The clairvoyant is from that album. And, and it brings me to like this point about critics. Don't believe everything they say. And in one way, I kind of sympathize with the work of a critic. Because being a critic, you have to just express your opinion like one week, 10 days after something came out. And it's so easy to get it wrong. For example, when uh, Groundhog Day, the movie came out, it was considered like a run-of-the-mill romantic comedy, mildly funny. You see the reviews of the time. And then it became like this great classic and actually spawned an, an entire genre of movies just based on the Groundhog Day premise. Groundhog Day became just a term in everyday conversation. He gave us I want you babe. I mean, he didn't give it to us, but it kind of made it popular again. I never heard it before. And it's just uh, such a great movie. But at the time, people were like, huh, yeah, just normal comedy. What I'm saying is just take what you hear from a critic with a big grain of salt. Because that critic might be wrong. And when I say take things people say with a grain of salt, I include that myself. Because maybe I maybe a drink, I don't know, I had uh, some garlic before. And I drink something and just that day it doesn't click with me. Sometimes there are some circumstances that we didn't expect and they play a role in our experience of things. I always try to give you my best most honest, most objective, no, maybe not really objective, but let's say my best opinion, but sometimes I can be wrong too, man. And I think I said it before, right? there were some drinks I didn't like for a long time, then I tried them again and uh, I turned to like them. There are some things I drank for a long time and then you get bored of. It's life, man.